Hey, YouTube, it's the one, Millie Marie. Hey, your boy, Jay. Today, we're back into Young Dawn the Sauce Dog. The night my heart stopped beating. Let's get to it. So, fast forward maybe five minutes, and now I'm in a different hospital bed, and I'm surrounded by like seven doctors. The main doctor comes up beside me, and he starts to break it down. So, Mr. Hines, as you now know, we've diagnosed you with it. Hey, listen, it's over. Do you get that? We're not going back. What, do you think we're, we're gonna go back to how it was before it hit? Nah, guys, nah. online school, you better get used to that. Oh, what's that you say? You don't like wearing masks at the grocery store? Sounds like a you problem. All I'm trying to say, just like how you had to get used to taking off your shoes at the airport after 9-11, Better get used to watching a lot of YouTube. And eventually, you're gonna need more stuff to watch, right? And that's why today, I wanna introduce you to MJM Animation. One of the most quality animation channels here on YouTube. Now, they don't tell stories quite like your boy here, but they do make very fun, short animations that are high quality, that are funny and nice to look at. They were also the ones that animated a music video for my song, Goodbye, so you know they're good at this shit. These guys are good friends of mine, and I told them that I could get them some subscribers. So here, don't make me look dumb in front of my friends, okay? Go subscribe and let them know Young Don sent you. Man. So about four years ago, Almost died. Life for real. No clickbait. No classic YouTuber exaggeration. About four years ago, my heart stopped in the emergency room of a California hospital, and I almost died. So, let's just jump right in, shall we? So you remember Bianca, right? From the, this girl was trouble and I wasn't ready to be a dad videos? Well, this happened during that little fiasco. So, you might want to go watch those videos if you want to get the full context. So one night, I snuck Bianca into my room, as I had done a few times, so that we could, uh, <laughs> get it cooking in the kitchen. You feel me? And I was in my bag that night. Okay? So I'm in the kitchen chefing like a young Gordon Ramsay, and then we come to the end of round one. So now it's half time, right? Which means it's time to get some refreshments. So I gotta restore the electrolytes, gotta get some fruit snacks in me, get some water, replenish, refuel, and recharge. Gatorade. So I sneak out of my room, and it's around midnight, so everybody else in the house is in bed, and I walk to the kitchen to get Bianca and I some water. And the kitchen was at most. 50 feet from the bedroom, right? Literally two hops and a skip away. Yet, in the short amount of time it took me to walk to the kitchen, by the time I got to the fridge, I was completely out of breath. So I'm thinking to myself, damn, I must have really been killing it. How is Shorty not on life support right now, my G? <laughs> I've never been that tired after one round, you feel me? So I get the water, I walk back to the room, and now I'm breathing heavy, like, I just climbed a mountain or something, right? It was clear that something was off. So I sit on the bed beside Bianca and she could see the concern on my face. And she's like, are you good? So I'm like, I don't know. I feel out of breath. My chest feels weird. So I take a deep breath. I place my hand above my heart and I listen. And I'm no doctor, but my gut was telling me that something wasn't right. So I turn to Bianca, who had just been sitting there in silence, and I asked her to listen to my heart and see if it sounded weird, thinking that maybe I'm tripping. She puts her head up against my chest and listens intensely. After about 10 seconds, she pulls her head back and her eyes were bugging. She looks at me and is like, mm, I don't know, Don, that doesn't sound good. So I'm like, okay. Mm. I guess I'll just sleep it off. Nah. <laughs> Hope one round's good for tonight, yeah? Because <laughs> I didn't think shit was that serious. Bianca, on the other hand, didn't agree. She thought I should go wake up Quinn's mom. She's like, I'm going to go to my room so we don't get caught. As soon as I'm there, go and wake Quinn's mom. So she leaves my room. I hear the door close. And then just to be safe, I was like, all right can't hurt. Now, if you're new to the channel, you really should watch these videos if you want an in-depth backstory of who all these people are. But in summary, Quinn was one of my best friends while I was in college. His mom had an extra room available because his little sister went to college in Boston. So she rented it to me pretty much for free and I lived there for almost three years. Bianca was a friend of their family and she moved in for a few months before taking off to the military. And while she was there, we took a liking to each other. Last thing you should know, Quinn's mom, who I 
fondly called Mama Bear because of how protective she is over her kids. I mean, while I was living there, she was a gun-owning single mother with a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Meaning, she could fuck you up if she needed to. Much like a real mother bear. Thus the name, Mama Bear. And Mama Bear just so happened to be a very experienced nurse practitioner. Which is why Bianca wanted me to wake her up so she could listen to my heart. So I walk over to Mama Bear's room, I knock on the door, and I crack it open, and I'm like, Hey Mama Bear, could you come listen to my heart? I think something might be wrong. And by this point, she's already in her mind adopted me as one of her cubs. Like, I was the big brown grizzly bear she never had. So she goes straight into mom mode, right? She hops out of bed, grabs her stethoscope, sits me down, and listens to my heart. So she's doing the whole nurse thing, right? Moving it around, and the whole time, I'm just waiting for her to tell me that I was tripping. After about maybe 20, 30 seconds, she looks at me with love and concern, and very calmly says to me, okay, so honey, I don't want you to panic, but we have to take you to the emergency room, okay? So, of course, I instantly start to panic, because right. why the fuck do we need to go to the emergency room? What's wrong with me. Also, hate hospitals, right? I mean, it's a terrible place. You go because of disease. If you leave, you leave in debt. And if you don't, it's because you died. So I'm like, are you sure it's that bad? She's like, don't no worry. Everything's going to be okay. But if we don't go now, this could get very serious very quickly. So I get dressed and we head to the hospital. We pull up and she drops me off at the entrance so that she could go find parking. And before I go inside, she tells me to say a very specific sentence to the nurse at the signing desk. I can't remember exactly what it was now, but whatever it was, worked. Because if you've ever been to an ER, you know that you're waiting at least an hour before anyone even takes your temperature. Five minutes. After I told that nurse what Mama Bear told me to tell her, it didn't even take five minutes for them to call my name. So this was clearly very serious, right? So they bring me into a room, they put me up to an EKG, and they're tracking my heart rate. And up until this point, no one has told me what's going on. Not even Mama Bear, right? I just know something's wrong with my heart. So Mama Bear walks into the room, and I see her look at the EKG monitor. At which point, her face just gets like, serious. I look at the nurse that's attending to me, and she's looking serious too. So I'm like, hey. What's going on? The nurse turns to me and is like, Mr. Hines, everything's gonna be okay. Okay, the doctors will be with you shortly. I'm like, doctors? As in like, plural? Why we need more than one? I just got one heart, right? That's like one heart, one doctor. Like, what's going on? The nurse leaves and then Mama Bear, who could see that I was stressing, turns to me and is like, okay, so it looks like you have a fit which is what I suspected. So I'm like, what's AFib? AFib, or atrial fibrillation, is an irregular and often rapid heart rate that occurs when the two upper chambers of your heart experiences chaotic electrical signals. Much like a good hip hop trap beat, a healthy heart rate is consistent and rhythmic. Kind of like the beat I'm playing right now. That's nice, right? It's a good rhythm. A heart rate aphid, on the other hand, is better represented by a beat that sounds like this. It's regular, it's fast, it's chaotic. So fast forward maybe five minutes and now I'm in a different hospital bed. And I'm surrounded by like seven doctors. The main doctor comes up beside me and he starts to break it down. So Mr. Hines, as you now know, we've diagnosed you with acute atrial fibrillation. And this is very strange because you're clearly a young and healthy male with... No history of heart condition. To be frank with you, Mr. Hines, this condition pretty much only occurs in older people, as well as people with defective hearts. So, we're not sure why this happened, but we will stop it. So first, I'm going to ask you to take a big breath in. I want you to hold it and bear down on your bowels as if you're trying to take a shit. I swear to God, that's what he said. So, that's what I did. He gave me a minute, checked my heart rate, and then was like, okay. So now we're going to try something a little more serious. We're going to attempt some chemical cardioversion. We're going to inject you with this medicine and that will hopefully take you out of the aphid. I say, okay. He sticks me with the needle. Wait a couple more minutes. He checks my heart rate. No dice. So now he's like, well, Mr. Hines, fortunately, it's come to the last option. We're going to have to attempt electrical cardioversion. So I'm like, 
that? He then says, we're going to attempt to shock your heart back in rhythm. Use a machine to generate a low voltage, which will briefly stop your heart and restart it. Think of it like hitting the restart button on your computer when it starts to lag. So I'm like, you mean, you mean like the clear thing? He's like, yeah, the clear thing. So now I'm scared, right? So I'm like, Doc, come on, man. There are no other options? He's like, yeah, but we did them already. Remember? So I'm like, oh, well, what, what if we just don't do it then? Well, seeing that your heart rate hasn't dropped under 100 BPM since you've been here, this has been persisting for what now? About an hour, with no sign of slowing down. Also taking into account that previous attempts of cardioversion failed, my best estimation is that a blood clot will eventually form in one of the upper chambers of your heart, which will eventually escape and make its way to your brain, at which point you will suffer a stroke. Best case scenario, you will have partial paralysis of your body and face. Worst case scenario um, is death. So what would you like to do? So how exactly does this shit? <laughs> Yo, shot me, nigga, shot me. So they apply the patches to my chest, they hook me up to the machine, and then they hit me with some anesthesia. They told me I wasn't going to feel anything, and I should count to ten. So I start counting, and by the time I get to eight, I was waking up to a very happy mama bear. I turn to her, and I'm like, so are they going to do it? And she's like, oh, honey, they already did it. I'm like, no way. She's like, yep, and your heart's back in rhythm. They released me that night, and it hasn't happened ever since. Doctors don't think it will ever happen again. A freak incident, is what you call it. Want to know what I call it? A1 box. Shit was so good, I almost put me in a box, nigga. <laughs> 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 Yo, Ding, 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 ding. And we out. Peace. Bye.